Princess Diana, or Lady Diana Spencer, as she was known before her marriage to English royal heir Prince Charles, is a towering figure of modern history. A new movie about Diana, Pablo Lorraine's Spencer, is already among the year's most talked about films. Here's everything you need to know. Spencer comes off as an extremely British film. It's about a very famous English woman and her role within the British royal family, written by Stephen Knight, a chronicler of British culture, past and present, and stars a primarily British cast. But many of the prime movers responsible for the film aren't British at all, such as Chilean director Pablo Lorraine and American lead actor Kristen Stewart. According to Deadline, a major portion of the movie was shot in Germany, where its financiers are based. Producer Paul Webster told Deadline that no British funders came through to support the film, explaining that he and his fellow producers put their own money into the project in its early days, just to get it off the ground. Because of the economic and political restrictions in the wake of Brexit, Spencer was one of the first British productions to attempt filming on mainland Europe. Before filming began, filmmakers even faced the possibility that they wouldn't be able to cast English actors to play Princess Diana's sons, William and Harry, because of work visa limitations. While Kristen Stewart has headlined some major movies, Spencer marks a new benchmark for the actor. Before the film's wide release, the rumor mill predicted she'd receive her first Academy Award nomination for the role. The weight of the task was not lost on Stewart, and she prepared to play Princess Diana using a variety of methods. First, she surrendered herself to the job. Stewart told Entertainment Weekly, I was like, you're not going to say no to this because who would you be in that case? I absolutely would have felt like such a coward. I'm not from the UK. I don't have any particular investment in the royal family. So I was kind of this really clean slate and then could absorb her in a way that actually felt very instinctive. Some elements Stuart felt she absolutely had to nail. She told In Style, The accent is intimidating as all hell because people know that voice and it's so, so distinct. I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts in people's hearts. As far as the late royal's demeanor, Stuart studied the Diana-centric season of The Crown, telling the BBC that she binged it in one night. She also told the BBC that she watched Diana's interviews, read multiple biographies, and even studied photographs of the late royal. Stuart's transformation was completed with some superficial changes, including replicas of the princess's jewelry and a wig. If an actor's work is to be transformative, beyond reading lines and playing pretend, then the preparation Kristen Stewart underwent to play Princess Diana and Spencer was worth the effort. In fact, she was so overtaken with the gravity of the job that it had physical ramifications. Stewart told the BBC, I couldn't open my mouth for two weeks before we started shooting. I had TMJ, to the point where I was, like, completely locked up. I was like, huh, I guess I'm really nervous. I was really tripping out until we started. Ultimately, the role burrowed itself deep into Stewart's psyche. Regarding the scene in which she descended a stairwell fully in character as Diana, Stewart told Entertainment Weekly, it felt so spiritual and so spooky, and I was so overwhelmed by the feeling of her. And I don't mean like ghostly stuff, I just mean everything she's made me think and feel, and it all just kind of happened in a moment." Stewart further told the Los Angeles Times that remembering Diana's death repeatedly upset her, telling the outlet, "...she felt so alive to me when I was making this movie, but there were moments where my body and mind would forget she was dead." Two or three times each week, during the filming of Spencer, Stewart said, I would just fully break down about the fact that she had died. I just could not come to terms with it. Spencer director Pablo Lorraine is from Chile and, as such, wasn't as exposed to the endless media coverage of Princess Diana, meaning he wasn't necessarily inundated with imagery or a sense of the importance of the people's princess. But a greater, more universal through-line inspired Lorraine's work on Spencer. Lorraine told Deadline that Spencer is a fairy tale upside down because Diana is a princess who rejected her prince and the chance to become queen, calling that idea the heart of the movie. And according to Kristen Stewart, Lorraine has a familiarity with crowd-pleasing American teen movies from the 80s, and he sought to recreate the emotional response they engendered. The synth-pop soft-rock hit All I Need Is a Miracle by Mike and the Mechanics figures prominently, which Stewart likened to a John Hughes moment. Two decades have passed since Princess Diana's death in a car accident in 1997. Enough time has gone by that filmmakers have begun to grapple with Diana's legacy. Spencer debuted on the film festival scene in the fall of 2021, and it's the latest in a number of projects of various approaches and levels of intensity that seek to appreciate, celebrate, or understand Diana. The fourth season of Netflix's The Crown, a series covering the chronology of the reign of Queen Elizabeth II, focused on the royal family's icy attitude toward a troubled and complicated Diana, portrayed by Emma Corrin, who received an Emmy nomination for her efforts. Around that same time, Netflix premiered Diana the Musical, a filmed take on a campy Broadway musical covering the life of the royal. Both TV projects follow Diana and I, a BBC Two movie about the effect of Diana's death on the people of the UK, set between her death and her subsequent historic funeral a week later. 
And before Kristen Stewart played Diana in Spencer, Naomi Watts did in Diana, a more traditional biopic that earned its star a Razzie Award nomination for Worst Actress in 2014. God, how do you keep going? Spencer is rooted in truth, and it's based on real events that happen to a real and very famous individual. But Spencer is not really a biopic, or a film that tells the entire life story of its subject. Spencer speculates on how the events of a weekend in late 1991 played out just before Diana announced her intention to separate from Prince Charles and officially leave royal life. The entire movie takes place over those few dozen hours, centering on events that are largely the invention of screenwriter Stephen Knight. It's also not new territory for director Pablo Lorraine, who happens to specialize in such non-traditional conjecture-based, not quite biopics of major public figures. The long sequences in Spencer of a deeply emotionally troubled Diana roaming around Sandringham House, lost in thought and anguish, is reminiscent of Jackie, Lorraine's 2016 film in which Natalie Portman portrayed First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy, numb and deeply grieving days after the assassination of her husband. Also in 2016, Lorraine directed Neruda, a biographical film about Nobel Prize-winning poet Pablo Neruda, but only in specifically the part of his life when he became a pariah on the lamb in Chile for his communist views. While Kristen Stewart has earned a lot of praise for her portrayal of Princess Diana and Spencer, she had some reservations because she couldn't completely relate to the real person she played, except for on a very basic level of being a public figure who faced a lot of negative scrutiny in the media. Stewart told Entertainment Weekly, I have experienced people kind of wanting to come in, but there is no comparison to this particular woman, in terms of that fervent desire to have her and know her. Nevertheless, Stewart took the gig very seriously and rigorously prepared, but still wound up worrying about a lack of legitimacy in her performance. Stewart told the Los Angeles Times, I have never been somebody who is very good at stepping outside of myself. I'm not a character actor. I'm not making any rules for myself, but the most honest work I've done contains my own memories. That said, she felt that Diana being a mother and a fiercely protective one at that deeply informed Diana's character and motivations. Stewart explained to the Daily Mail, I'm not a mom yet. I need that to feel authentic. It's the one part of playing her that I felt disloyal about. The plot of Spencer concerns Princess Diana coming to the tough decision to separate from Prince Charles, her husband and father of her two children, William and Harry. As Diana figures out how she can leave the royal life she's come to loathe, Spencer stages several dark sequences. Spoilers ahead. These disturbing sequences include the princess hallucinating her own death, contemplating choking to death on a pearl necklace, throwing herself down a flight of stairs, and making herself vomit. From a filmmaking perspective, those scenes spectacularly demonstrate Diana's inner agony. But according to some royal experts and critics, those parts of Spencer were uncalled for. Majesty Magazine editor Ingrid Seward said to The Sun, It is really cruel to portray her like this. It is totally unnecessary. William and Harry will be very angry and hurt about this. Royal watcher Penny Juror concurred, calling the scenes in question unnecessarily gratuitous, and even questioning if the film is factually incorrect as it pertains to such events. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite historical figures are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.